Hi, this is Anthony from EvoTech Pacific and in today's video we're going to look at the Dual 3D software, the latest version of that, which happens to be uh, this particular version here, uh, 2022-0920, which happens to be the day that it was released. So in order to install this software, what we're going to do is double click on the folder and I will uh, upload this particular folder into uh, a Dropbox and I will provide a link um, in the comments below. Uh, but once we've opened up our folder, you can see here we've got a setup file. So first of all, we're going to run this. So just double click on the setup file. That's an application file. It'll tell you that you require a PC, uh, Windows 7 and higher, and NVIDIA as the main GPU. Um, select your language that you want to go for. So English is fine for me. And then we're going to hit confirm. Now what that will do is it will start the installation process and you will be able to uh, run through uh, this. It will start installing on uh, automatically on your, uh, on your computer. Uh, I want to modify this file because I had an earlier version of this, uh, which some of you may have, may, may not, um, but I had an earlier version. So I'm just going to click on modify there and go to next. Click on next again for the UIC device and it will uh, modify that ICD or IC device and, uh, and go from there. Once that's finished, we can simply hit finish and install completed. So you've got that uh, message there. The next thing we need to do is we need to install the driver. Uh, so I go to the executable uh, folder, double click on that. And you'll see here we've got our driver set up x64. So we're going to double click on that one there and that will install our driver for us. Um, I'm not 100% sure if the driver is automatically installed when you do the, uh, the previous installation but I like to do it just in case because I've had a couple of instances there where I've installed the software and it hasn't been able to find the driver so just uh, do this process just to make sure that everything is all good and we can finish that once we're done with that then we can switch on the Evo Light 3D scanner and we can hook it up to our computer Okay, so once you have plugged in your machine and switched it on and connected it up to your computer, we need to now run the Dual 3D software, which a little icon will appear on your desktop. And we're going to double click on that. Now, the very first thing that it will probably ask you to do will be to calibrate the machine. Uh, it's always a good idea to recalibrate the machine in any case um, after a uh, software update. And what we'll do is we'll place our calibration piece into the, the scanner itself. Just make sure it clicks into place magnetically. Uh, we're using the CB5, which is the jewelry um, uh, calibration piece. And we're going to click on the confirm button there. The new software says to please fix the calibration plate and adjust the lightness. So we're going to adjust the lightness here. Um, you know, if it's red, that's no good. Uh, so yeah, something like that is, is pretty good. Once we do that, we can hit the tick and it will begin the calibration process. All right, so now that that calibration is done, we got, we can see here that our accuracy is 0 0.0032 millimeters, extreme value 53. I'm gonna click the, green, uh, the tick there. And now we are ready for our first scan. Now, once you finish your calibration, you can load up your model, no matter what that is. Uh, if it is a, um, a reflective piece, like maybe a gemstone, or if it's a, uh, a ring, a piece of jewelry, something that's shiny, uh, you're going to want to make sure that you coat it with some scanning spray. I personally use the A-Sub Blue uh, scanning spray, and uh, you can normally get that uh, pretty much uh, from most really good 3D printing uh, stores and things, but once you have um, determined what you're going to scan, you place uh, that onto your scanner to make sure that it locks in uh, using the magnets there. 
and we're going to go through the the dual 3d version 2 software so right up top here tells you what you're using you've got uh, your new project there which we'll look at in just a moment uh, we have our load so if you've um, already done a scan and you wanted to maybe add to that uh, you can load in a scan that you've previously saved uh, we have our uh, path option which is this is where it's going to or your scan will uh, save to so when we click on that there um, you can determine uh, where on your computer you want that scan to go so you would create a folder and say for example if you wanted to to go onto the desktop there then you would select the folder that you want uh, to use or uh, we have our calibration uh, icon here our settings as well so when we click on that it brings up a few options that you can play around and change uh, you've got uh, your language here uh, your path again you can change the default uh, to where that uh, they get saved texture whether you want texture on or not uh, the default that comes out is no so I'm going to leave that is uh, where it is the trim plane before the scan um, I always think that's a really good idea to uh, to leave that on I haven't really seen a lot of 3d scanning software that has this feature I think it's really cool so I leave that on and the default plane value so how high uh, that particular plane uh, sits so mine's at uh, at negative 12 you can change that up or down as you see fit I'm gonna leave the default as there the scale uh, so uh, this is pretty important I wouldn't change this um, whenever the way I look at it if you're wanting to scan something you want it at one one scale you don't want it uh, anything different than that um, particularly if you're going to be creating a fitted wedding ring or something like that around it so I'd leave that at one your file type you can save it as an OBJ or an ASC file if you wish. The default that uh, it's saved as is an STL obviously, so I'm not gonna worry about changing either of those. Uh, update file in Remesh, yes, uh, we definitely want that to happen because uh, we wanna make sure that um, when we've remeshed the file, it updates the, uh, the file that is saved. Mouse control, you can change uh, from the default to ExoCAD. If you're familiar with ExoCAD, you can use that instead. I am not, so I'm gonna leave default on. Your light theme as classic or spherical. I've never used spherical before. I'm not going to start, so I'm happy with classic. And you can also change the color uh, of the scan. So uh, the outside color is going to be this kind of grayish kind of color, and you can uh, the inside of the, uh, the model will be this black color. You can change that to whichever color you want by clicking on these little paint tin icons here and um, you know play around with that if you wish and we can just hit confirm once we're done there so i'm just going to cancel that uh, we have next door to that we have our help when we click on that it just tells you which version you're currently running so i guess if tech support wanted to know which version you're you're using uh, then uh, that's what you would uh, quote back to them and of course we have our minimize our maximize and our closing uh, icons there as well so we're going to go to our new project here we're going to give this one a name I'm going to call it Alfred and the item number I'm just going to call this one number one I only want to scan one item I'm not doing an inlay or anything like that uh, I'm not scanning multiple items I'm only doing one uh, item uh, and I want a fine scan I don't want a fast scan the, uh, the dictionary here this is where the uh, the file will save to by default and as I said you can change that by going into your settings up here and changing that if you want your exposure gain as well at the moment we can see down in our little uh, camera uh, corner here that uh, we can adjust you know our exposure once you start seeing red you want to kind of dial it back you definitely don't want to do a scan that's like that because you're just not going to capture all that much um, or you won't the scan won't be as good so we kind of want to dial that down so we've got very minimum uh, red on the actual piece itself once we're happy with that we're going to click on the green oh sorry on the green tick but just the uh, the start scan there and here is where we're going to uh, align or determine the height of our plane here so you can see here we've got a, a practice scan here we can adjust that plane a little bit uh, higher or lower uh, lower you can see the the actual plate and the um, uh, the blue tack that I've got this uh, piece secured with so I kind of want to bring that up uh, 
definitely don't want to get any of the plane. Something like that's not too bad because I can always, um, you know, delete uh, any of the excess. But if you don't want to do any of that, then take it right up and uh, you won't capture any of that blue tag there. Um, and we can always, you know, uh, turn this around and capture the bottom side anyway. So once I'm happy with all that there, I'm going to start my scan by clicking on save there. And the dual 3D software will start running the scanner to begin the scanning process. So you can see that, um, you know, we've got uh, the top of the head here. And uh, another question I get asked quite often is how do you rotate um, this? The best way to rotate is to hold down your center mouse button and you can just rotate it around that way. Uh, zooming in and zooming out with your center mouse button as well. And we can see here that that little bit there we're gonna have to get rid of, which is not a big deal. Okay, and now it's just about finished registering there. So once that's done, we can go through and just check what we've got there. I'm gonna get rid of that little piece there. And, um, just by dragging my mouse with my left mouse button and just highlighting it and just hitting the, uh, the bin icon that deletes those uh, selections there. Uh, at the moment, the, um, the normal selection, which is what I've got uh, as comes out as default, but you can select to a polyline if you want, uh, or you can paint uh, the selection that you don't want. So for example, if we selected that there, we you know uh, hold our left mouse button down and just paint what we don't want, and then trash it after that. Uh, you can adjust the size of that dot, obviously, by changing the, uh, the amount here. So if we go down to say 20, for example, you can see that dot is much smaller smaller so that's I guess for those people who like to uh, you know or need to for example paint um, you know in there uh, obviously we've got our delete selection so anything that you have highlighted you can delete and we can also undo that scan too uh, sorry not just the scan but also what we've deleted so if you selected an area and you've deleted it you can undo it and uh, that'll bring that back out here um, so just in case you've uh, You've accidentally selected a piece that you realize you need. So I'm going to delete that one there. Uh, these buttons down here are the reverse selections and your select none. So um, I haven't ever had the need to use these. You may though, uh, if you wish. Down here we've got add scan, we've got uh, restart if you're not happy with the scan altogether. And then if you are happy with the scan, we can wrap, but I'm not quite finished with this one yet. I wanna capture the bottom side uh, of, the, uh, of the piece there. So what I'm gonna do is take the, uh, the figure off the scanning unit itself and just reverse the model so that um, I basically put it upside down so that I can scan the bottom side as well. I'll place that on top of the uh, the scanning unit there just so it locks in nicely. You can see what we've got down here. And we're gonna click on the start scan button again. This is gonna do a second scan for us. And uh, it'll capture all of the underside areas, any areas that it couldn't quite capture, uh, it should be able to capture really quite nicely. Okay. So now that it's uh, finished that bottom end of the scan, you can see what we've got there, which is really pretty cool. I'm pretty happy with that. And so what we're gonna do next is we're going to click on the align button there. Now, the new software is pretty good. It uh, generally will self align everything that we need it to, which is what it's just done there. It's figured out that uh, you know it has a definite bottom and a definite top there. And so uh, it's quite, um, uh, quite easily uh, align that up for us. Now, if it didn't, for whatever reason, it's still doing its point cloud registering here, but if it didn't, for whatever reason, uh, then what we can do is come across to the, um, the cancel here, if, if you weren't happy with the auto align. 
Uh, so if we cancel that, then what we've got is a scan here and a scan on this side. So we click on two and that'll go to this window here or this pane here. And we've got our original scan, which you know we haven't got the bottom section there for. So what we can do with this in a manual scan is we can simply just uh, zoom in here and let's place some points on some key areas. mark a line and uh, now that we've uh, aligned that all up we can see what we've got we've got the bottom section there it's uh, it's aligned all of that up for us and um, once it's finished doing its um, it's aligning there we should be good to go to the next section which if you're happy with that we can click on confirm now what we've got is um, a rough scan here uh, so that's not uh, finished quite yet so we can adjust things like your mesh quality now the default that comes out these are all defaults that come out here so the mesh quality is six I'm gonna leave that where it is uh, I really want a, a good quality mesh here um, I'm also going to just take that fillings denoise up a little bit more to maybe about four anywhere between four and six I find is pretty good what that's going to do is it's going to denoise any of the areas here so if you've got some you know some chatter uh, around the edges it'll it'll get rid of those smoothen uh, you know you can smooth it out you can take it all the way up to the top there bear in mind that the smoother you go uh, the bigger the file is going to be so um, you know take it up to about say 25 to play around with and see if you're happy with that you can always go back if you if you're not a hundred percent and also decimate so you can decimate that down uh, you know to say 50 percent of the uh, the file size that'll help you know reduce the uh, the size of the file once you're happy with everything there then we can um, click on the uh, the wrap option and that will register everything and then wrap it all up for us and it should theoretically give us a really nice smooth scan now depending on the settings that you used uh, beforehand will determine how long this actually takes if you've got you know really um, you know high settings and um, you know you haven't really decimated it or anything like that then it's going to take a little bit longer um, if you've decimated a lot then um, you know but you've got average settings you'll find that it'll probably still take about the same amount of time but what it's doing is it's uh, helping reduce the uh, the file size by decimating that uh, that mesh and um, it's kind of um, until you're used to the machine it's and, and the software and how it works it might be a little bit of experimentation obviously it does also depend on what you're scanning too if you're scanning uh, gemstones for example um, you know then this process may not take anywhere near as long as if you're doing you know organic figures or uh, you know jewelry and um, you know complex pieces like that and as you can see here the um, the end result, if we uh, rotate him around, they feel really pretty good. It's not too bad at all. So I'm pretty happy with uh, with that that whole result there. Uh, you can zoom in there and check out and see what's going on there. Now, if you weren't happy with this, you can go through and just you know completely readjust these uh, these uh, settings here. But we've also got a tool called Mesh Optimizer. When we click on that, what it will do is open up the, uh, the Thunk 3D Mesh It. And this is a series of tools that we can use to uh, optimize the mesh. Uh, if you have a look here, we've got our edit tool. We've got a measuring tool as well, our mesh optimize tool, uh, a fill tool. So if you've got any holes in here that you really want to fill up, uh, so it's a nice solid uh, or watertight um, mesh and our deviation analysis, which is new. We have some tools over here. Uh, so select the visible one, select through, uh, circle select and all of our polyline and paint selects as well um, we also have some components there so that's uh, like a boolean operation uh, where if you've got uh, another um, 
uh, another scan for example and you're wanting to join the two pieces together that's going to be your uh, component software there uh, or component tool uh, you can delete uh, areas there if you painted areas there you can delete them and we have another uh, flip normals tools all right but once you're happy with uh, you know the uh, the different uh, areas here you know, we can measure from say you know that e to uh, you know that e there and you know it's going to give you the the measurements up here which is pretty cool that's a nice cool feature um, you know we can go to mesh optimize and you can delete, uh, you know, any of the spikes in the in the uh, the mesh itself. So if we zoom in there, you can see there's you know, a few little spikes happening around. It's kind of a little bit bumpy. You know, you've got an area there where you can smoothen it out as well. So you know, if we wanted to, so for example, smooth out his face a little bit more. Maybe he's here. And you can reduce uh, or increase the size of uh, this brush as you need to. And uh, you know, we'll see what that um, what that does for us. Yeah, so that's a that's a much smoother in comparison to the uh, the original on this side of the face. So yeah, it's a pretty cool tool too. Uh, and then we have our decimate tool that uh, is going to you know reduce the amount of uh, triangulations down uh, to something that's you know perhaps a, a little bit better as far as the uh, the end mesh is concerned so if you were to take that down to say you know 50 percent and then hit decimate then that will uh, certainly help you out when it comes to um, you know lowering the size of your file be aware though that uh, if you decimate it too far then you know you can uh, adjust the uh, the detail in your scan so it's a fine line between a reasonable decimation and uh, something that takes away detail so you can see here that the initial triangles were uh, 1 million six hundred and sixty eight thousand three hundred thirty four and the current triangles are now uh, 80 uh, sorry eight hundred thirty four thousand one hundred and sixty two so that's that's pretty good you know you've um, you've taken it down you know by half and that's certainly going to give you a perhaps a, a better file to play around with. So I'm going to smooth that around. Oops, not that. Uh, let's go here and you know, kind of smooth that area out there. And uh, let it do its thing. Once you're happy with that, then we can simply click on the uh, the button there and take us back to. You, know, you see that's pretty good that gave us pretty good uh, some pretty good options all right uh, once you've done that there then it's time to save the file we're going to click on the save button there that'll save that down there that's number one there uh, that's our, uh, our 3d object or our STL file and then you can open that up into the software that you're after and uh, continue designing if that's what you're after doing or 3d print it all right, I uh, hope this video has been helpful. If you have found uh, it helpful, then please feel free to subscribe to our channel. It really does help us out. Make sure you click on the little bell icon that'll uh, notify you every time we upload a file. And if uh, you have any questions or comments, please uh, leave them in the, uh, the comment section. I've just started opening up the comments. So um, yeah, it'll be interesting to see if you found this uh, helpful. I hope that helps.